been rumored that I'd die. But I'm alive and well in Tennessee. You know, the Volunteers returned 17 starters entering the 2015 season was on paper. It looks like will be Tennessee's best season this decade easily. However, that won't happen if the experience you have coming back has not developed into a better quality team. And there's no doubt that Tennessee has plenty of speed. They've added some beef um, on the defensive line, which we'll get into in a second. Of course, they play in the SEC, but look, hey, it's the SEC East. Not to say it's not tough, but at least you're not playing, you know, both Alabama and Auburn. You only play Alabama because they're, they're your national rival. And you're not playing LSU, you're not playing A&M, not playing either Mississippi school. So schedule-wise, Tennessee, and we'll talk about the schedule in a minute, volunteers don't look that bad at all. Okay, It's, it's going to be a pretty favorable schedule. For the volunteers entering this season, new offensive coordinator Mike DeBoard knows that his offense wants to be a multiple offense. You know what? DeBoard has plenty of weapons, and that includes Josh Dobbs. So this time last year was not even the starting quarterback. Um, that was Justin Worley. Well, Worley has moved on, but we saw toward the end of the season after Worley's injury what Dobbs could do, not just as a passer, seven TDs and five picks in limited time of starting, but also, too, he can run with the ball. Um, the guy averaged 85 yards rushing per game and had actually more TDs rushing than he did throwing. And that tells you that you have a multidimensional quarterback, and he also will have the experienced offensive line behind him. Now, the offensive line... Achilles Hill from last year, even though they do return four starters, is this scary fact. Last season, they only averaged less than um, four yards per time. And also, too, offensive line gave up a whopping 43 sacks. Ouch. That's that's a ton. And I know that Tennessee last year, no FBS team out there. There's over 125 FBS schools. Um, I, I know that, that none played more true freshmen than Tennessee. They had over 22 that that saw some kind of playing time last year. I understand that. Having said that, offensive line-wise, um, I'm not going to get into um, that as far as the reason why Tennessee gave up so many sacks. Um, 43. That's ridiculous. Um, again, it'll be Kyler um, Kirbison that will occupy that left tackle position. We'll see if he uh, can, like the other volunteer offensive linemen, uh, develop and help with pass protection. And yes, I know that, that Worley wasn't the quarterback that Dobbs is as far as mobility, but still, when your offensive line can't provide protection, obviously, even with a mobile quarterback, it'll make life more difficult for him. But if they give him time to throw, they give Dobbs time to throw, the passing game should be able to excel, and that includes, um, you know, like Pig Howard, we're talking about the receiver north, also to uh, Josh Malone, and uh, Vaughn Pearson. And by the way, um, since people in volunteer country in Tennessee land, know more about their program than I do. And I have really been trying to find out the latest about Pearson uh, because of the fact that, of course, he missed spring ball. He was suspended because of a uh, rape case in which um, he was named as a suspect. I've been trying to find out his status with the team ever since. So if you know something, you, know, you can highlight in the comments or message me. Um, I would appreciate it big time. And as far as the ground game goes, you're going to have one heck of a one-two punch. This is one of the biggest reasons why I think Tennessee will be better than seven and six. And by the way, that was an improvement for Tennessee, considering that the three years before that, they didn't go to a bowl game. Uh, I'm talking about uh, you know, John, um, I'm talking about Jalen Hurd, as well as the newcomer from Alabama, um, Alvin uh, Kamara. Now, as far as Hurd, guy had nearly 900 yards a year ago. He's going to be what you would call the Thunder, and Kamara will be known as Lightning. And remember, Kamara began his career at Nick Saban's uh, current school, Alabama. So, ground game should be good defensively. Um, hey, you can kind of look at it this way. Yeah, I know the offense gave up their share of sacks, but the defense, hey, they were getting their share as well. Um, and you return a couple of valuable pieces uh, to that mix as far as sacks with uh, Kurt uh, Majit as well as uh, Derek Barnett. Barnett's going to have a great opportunity to be one of the best defensive linemen in the country from his end spot if he's not already. Both uh, Majit and Barnett combined for um, 21 sacks a year ago for the balls. Um, defensive end, um, Andrew Butcher, you'll have him, but... Big reason why I think people in Knoxville are very optimistic about Tennessee being better defensively, a couple of valuable pieces added um, from their 2015 recruiting class, which is one of the top five in the country. It's just amazing that Butch Jones is getting this, this talent, even though he hasn't been there that long. 
Um, talk about uh, Kai McKenzie or Kalili McKenzie, 6'4", 340 pounds, legitimate arms. Guy has one heck of a push. Don't be surprised if this guy is starting in that opener against Bowling Green. And then uh, Shai Tuggle, uh, 6'2", 312, another newcomer. So Tennessee, I think they will be a lot better as far as rush defense goes just because of those two guys alone, even though they're freshmen. Um, talk about a loss, though, for this team. That's A.J. Johnson. It seemed like this guy was – was there for the you know throughout eternity uh, for the Volunteers. He started all four years there, middle linebacker. He was a tackling machine. He's going to be missed. Um, secondary, plenty, plenty of speed. Cameron Sutton should make all SEC first team uh, from his corner spot. And watch out for the safety and uh, Brian Randolph as well. He can play. And uh, Ladero McNeil, another defensive back. Tennessee should have plenty of experience in terms of that secondary. And Thing to really watch out for, though, if you're a volunteer fan, red zone defense has to be better. Last season, the volunteers, anytime an opponent got inside their 20-yard line, inside the Tennessee 20, it was going to be points virtually every time. 34 times opponents got inside the red zone, and 32 times they came away with touchdowns, and or including scores, excuse me, 32 of 34 scoring, and 23 of those 34 times inside the 20 was TDs. That's way too much. And, again, I think the offense will be better, but defense – um, try to push them out inside the 20, but inside the 20, giving up three is a lot better than giving up that seven, of course. Talking about the kicking game uh, for the Volunteers, um, Aaron Medley, not too bad. The guy is nearly automatic from inside 40. But we'll see if he's improved with his launch range kicking and punting. Uh, they're going to be inexperienced there, so that could be an area of concern. Schedule, Tennessee gets seven home games and only four true road games. That sounds like a pretty good draw to me. Uh, that 12th game, where it's neutral site, is in Nashville against Bowling Green. That's a season opener. Um, but it must will be a home game because it will be nothing but volunteer orange for that one. And the second game of the season, it's against, well, <laughs> it's against my Sooners, who last season beat Tennessee by 24. But my Sooners are going to have a harder time winning this time because, of course, it's in Knoxville, and the Sooners have, have a lot of questions to answer um, entering this season. So that looks like one of the better non-conference uh, games of the season, and um, of course, Big 12 versus ACC. Don't get Bob Stoops started on that argument, <laughs> but that will be the number two um, game from Tennessee, and it's a home game, their first true home game of the year. And the rest of the non-conference schedule looks pretty manageable. Western Carolina and North Texas both come to Knoxville, and the first true road game for the Volunteers at Florida, one of the ugliest games last year that we saw, very low-scoring game. Offenses for both teams looked bad. Florida won that game by a point. You host Arkansas in mid-October, and your natural rival, of course, Alabama. You get them late in October. Don't see how Tennessee is going to win that one unless they play the perfect game and Bama helps them along the way. The big game in the SEC East, of course, is against Georgia, and this time you get the Bulldogs at home. Georgia's won nail-biters, I think, each of the last two years um, against Tennessee. And South Carolina, they're on the rebuilding um, path right now. I would think Tennessee can get a win there. At Missouri, is going to be troublesome. Tigers have won the East Division each of the last two seasons. Not bad for a team who hasn't been in the SEC very long. And you play your intrastate rivals from Nashville, that's Vanderbilt, get them in Knoxville to close out the year. I think Tennessee is going to be improved. Not greatly improved, but I, I see 9-3 and three in their future. And I see them finishing a tie for second in the SEC East. Look, they're an up-and-coming program. Um, I just don't know um, how this team um, – Defensively, is going to um, do compared to last year. Again, the red zone part has to be better. And offensively, um, I want to see the offensive line, um, except when they play OU, of course, <laughs> I want to see the offensive line be able to provide better protection. So, got Tennessee going 9-3 and three overall, and for Butch Jones' best year so far in Knoxville. That's it, everybody. See you later.